Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another Corrupted Gauntlet Guide. Last week I put out a beginner's guide for the Corrupted Gauntlet and mentioned I would follow it up with an advanced tips and tricks video. Which is, uh, which is this one. This one right now. So if you haven't seen the first video, I would recommend to go back and watch it. I'm going to be talking about the more technical info on the Corrupted Gauntlet, and it won't make much sense unless you understand the basics first. I'm not really sure how to go about ordering these random tips and tricks, so I'm just going to divide them by the gathering phase and then the boss fight. If you do end up finding this video helpful, then a like on it would really help out the channel. I just want to say thank you, because like the channel's been doing awesome lately and I'm just so so happy about it. But I do believe it's time to start talking about the gauntlet. What I want to address right away is something from my last video. For learning the basics, I recommended this inventory and gear setup, but it's actually possible to get tier 2 armor for the boss fight. This is best for people that really understand the gathering phase, but are still having a hard time with the boss. Tier 2 armor reduces a lot of the damage you'll take in the Hunlet fight. The reason I didn't recommend you learn with it is because the time to acquire the additional materials for crafting the tier 2 armor is tighter, and newer players can become overwhelmed easily by this. You'll need 4 additional bark, cotton, and ore, and 180 crystal shards if you want to try it out. On the easier side of things, when you come across tier 2 enemies you can prioritize the weaker ones to kill to save time. Scorpions are the weakest, unicorns are in the middle, and the wolves are the toughest. It only makes a slight difference but it can really help in the long run for saving time. Continuing on with enemies, I have two tips to share with you for demi bosses. First off, whenever you're checking a potential demi-boss room, you should stand off to the side when lighting the room. If you stand in the hallway when you check, a dark beast or a dragon projectile can fly at you immediately and hit for over 40 damage, costing you at least 2 paddlefish. Secondly, you can kill two of the same demi-bosses and still get a different tier 3 crafting item. For example, let's say you come across two bears. The first one will drop you a spike, as usual but then the second bear killed will drop either an orb or a bowstring at random. You don't need to pass up on a boss just because it's the same one. I also talked about weapons briefly in the last video. For a typical run, the best two weapons to have are the halberd and the bow because of how piety and rigor work. The staff technically outputs less DPS because augury doesn't increase damage dealt, it only increases accuracy and defense. That being said, I honestly prefer having the bow and staff as my two weapons. What it comes down to is one less thing to worry about in the Hunlet fight. If you have a Halberd, then you'll have to get close to the boss to attack. I find it easier to not think as much about positioning myself close to the boss. On top of that, it's easier to weave attacks in when you're running away from lightning if the weapon can attack from range. And on a slight side note, if maybe one of your combat stats isn't up to par for the gauntlet, then you should try to get the tier 3 weapons that you have the better stats for. I'm going to start off with something simple. If you're using Runelight, you can go into NPC Indicator Settings and punch in Corrupted Hunlif for enemies to highlight. You want to have Highlight Tile on and Highlight Hall off. I find this useful for positioning the boss during the fight and making sure I never accidentally run under him and get smacked. Which reminds me, you can actually briefly stand under the Hunlif and not get smacked by a melee attack. He'll only stomp you if you're under him on the same tick he would use a regular attack. Any time in between his two attacks is fair game, although I still don't really recommend doing this. Positioning the Hunlif correctly can make a huge difference in the fight. Having him almost directly in the corner is the best spot to have him so that you're able to run around him if lightning is chasing you. Having him in the middle makes it more difficult to avoid lightning as the fight goes on. Another fun fact, the Hunlif's attack range is one space shorter than the size of the room. That means if the Hunlif is pressed against a wall, all you need to do is run to the opposite side of the room and the Hunlif will move one tile towards you, which in turn, will open up that single space to run behind him if needed. Now as we all know, the Hunlif will change attack styles every 4 attacks he throws out. This, along with all the other mechanics in the fight, can be a lot to process. A small trick to help reduce your information load is knowing that his lightning stomp cannot happen on his 4th attack. For example, if the Hunlif attacks with 3 basic attacks, you know the 4th one isn't going to be lightning, and you'll be safe for a little bit. You won't have to worry about poor lightning positioning. You can allocate more of your brain power to focus on correct prayers and weapon changes with that small moment of peace of mind. 
I'm going to give you guys these next three pieces of advice with extreme caution, because I don't want anyone getting killed on my account. For those of you that know what Wooks walking is, I want to say it's possible for you to do it with the lightning. Personally, I've never learned to do it, but I can see how it'd be helpful to continue attacking rather than running away from the lightning. Messing it up can easily cost your life though. Also, when I do the gauntlet, I tend to camp low health. Remember, with tier 1 armor, the Hunlift's max hit is 13, and it's possible to avoid all other damage during the fight. Whenever you eat a paddlefish, you waste an attack cycle until you can hit again. The best time to eat is when you're running away from the lightning and can't attack, or when you absolutely have to eat, like when your health is at 13 or lower. Alright, we're down to my final advanced tips and tricks for the Corrupted Gauntlet. What we have last is the holy trinity of gauntlet speedrunning. Yeah, you heard me right, speedrunning. Ever notice on the leaderboard that the best time to complete the Corrupted Gauntlet is less than 5 minutes? I'm going to talk about a few things that make that possible starting with the easiest and working our way up. The first one is actually quite easy. Use Vengeance before you start a run. As long as you're not hit by anything before the Hunlift, you can let the Hunlift hit you, without prayer on, for his first attack to get a little head start in the fight. It's pretty simple honestly, just remember to put your prayer back up after that first hit. Secondly, we have Redemption Flicking. I didn't even know this was possible until I looked into it, but yeah, apparently you're able to flick Redemption. The entire process involves first, getting to low health, but still above 13, making sure you have the correct prayer on, and then right before the Hunlift's attack connects with you, flick on Redemption to heal. If it does work, your prayer is going to be drained to zero, so you need to quickly sip a potion and then put your correct prayer back on. Doing this allows you to heal with prayer rather than with paddlefish, which means you use less time in the gathering phase getting food. It can also be an option for a regular run if you just run out of food but still have potions. Or maybe you're like me and forget to cook your food, so the only option is the redemption flick, but then you just give up and die anyway. Finally, we have 5 to 1 attacking. Let me explain how to do 5 to 1 and then why you would want to use it. As you should know, every 6 off prayer attacks you do to the Hunlift will make him change his prayer to whatever weapon you attacked with last. This can be used to our advantage. I think it's best explained visually here. For example, if the Hunlift is praying mage, you can attack 5 times with the bow, and on the 6th hit you attack with melee. The Hunlift will then change his prayer to melee, allowing you to continue attacking with the bow 5 more times. Once the cycle repeats itself again, you'll need to use a mage attack instead of a melee attack as your off prayer attack. So for this to work you need a bow, a staff, and a melee attack option, which could just be punching the Hunlift. I can see two main reasons for doing this. For speedrunning, it allows you to save time by going for only a tier 3 bow and a tier 1 staff. And for clarity, you don't have to do this with the bow, most people just consider it the best weapon for the gauntlet. This method can also be used if you only have one combat stat that's high enough for the corrupted gauntlet. It ensures that you can always be attacking with the best combat style you have access to. I've done a decent amount of corrupted gauntlet runs, and I can tell you I mostly stick to what I told you guys in the first video. A simple inventory with no speedrun tactics involved. My typical kill time is between 8 and 10 minutes, and I'm okay with that because I can consistently and comfortably achieve it. I'm opting to have fun with my grind rather than go for the best efficient tactics. Of course, if you guys have any additional questions about the gauntlet, or RuneScape in general, then feel free to ask me. YouTube does work, but joining my Discord will ensure that I see your messages. I also like to do weekly giveaways if you're into that stuff. Below I'm going to link some helpful wiki pages and videos that I use to learn everything that you guys might find useful as well. But that's it for this one guys. I hope you all have the most wonderful day you've ever had, and I'll see you in the next one.